five marked mistakes every business owner should avoid. All right, guys, welcome to this lesson. And in this one, I'm gonna be sharing with you five marketing mistakes you want to avoid if you're in business. And pay very close attention to the last mistake because that's a mistake that really you shouldn't be making in business. It's one that's often overlooked, so pay very close attention to that and make sure you watch until the end. So the number one is no target customer. If you're in business, you need to make sure you're speaking to a certain target customer. This does not mean you're speaking to the entire market because if you do that, unfortunately, you're not going to appeal to anyone. And it's often a uh, mistake a lot of people who are in business make. They create content for the sake of creating content with no individual in mind. Uh, when I wrote my book, I actually had a specific police officer in mind I was writing it for. And when I'm creating content as well, in every piece of content, I'm making sure I've got that individual in mind uh, when I'm creating it because that allows me to create more deeper connection and also it allows me to do some research on that business or that individual because that's going to be important for you to ultimately have that connection. You need to know their their problems, their wants, their challenges, their frustrations, and also uh, you know their outcomes, their desires, and the results they want. Without those things, unfortunately, you're not going to connect and you're not going to build that know, like, and trust you really should be building if you're going to be getting any customers. Number two is attention. Now, uh, this just doesn't mean getting yourself out there and creating content and making sure you're visible, which should be uh, common knowledge. What I mean by this is using headlines. Um, it should be no surprise to you that in the newspapers or in the media, they use uh, crazy headlines that captivates uh, or captures, sorry, your attention. And we need to take some lessons from that because it works, right? David Ogilvy, one of the, you know, arguably one of the greatest marketers that there are, said that people read uh, headlines five times more than the body copy. So you want to make sure that that headline is hooking your um, ideal target customer to consume the rest of your content. So whenever you're creating content, always think of that headline grabbing attention that you're going to be needing in order for your customer to really get eyeballs on consuming your content. Number three is a call to action. Now, lots and lots of people create content, which is awesome. You're getting yourself out there, you're overcoming your comfort zone, and generally you're getting shit done. That's great to see. but. Often, sometimes, uh, a mistakes happened where people aren't directing their viewer or their audience to take a specific action. And that action could be literally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, as I do on my YouTube channels. Or it could be that you want to direct people to do a certain opt-in, like a lead magnet, or it could be to download a free copy of your book. Whatever it may be, you need to direct your audience member to take an action because that's kind of the next logical step. And if they don't know what step to take, even though it's obvious to you, then unfortunately you may lose that audience member who is obviously checking you out. Number four is building an email list. Now, many people, when it comes to uh, marketing, they create content, which is awesome. You know, they get themselves out there. But the reality is you wanna make sure you're building a email list or a, a contact list, uh, collecting names, emails, and I personally recommend telephone numbers. There's a great story, well, not a great story, but it's a, it's a lesson that, you know, unfortunately I had to face the hard way where I was generating lots and lots of leads for uh, my target customer at the time, which was police officers, and I wasn't collecting their telephone numbers. And I spent thousands on Facebook ads doing that, and unfortunately, uh, it kind of uh, slowed things down, I would say, because a lot of our kind of um, sales process is to make sure we're actually speaking to people, building relationships and nurturing those relationships to ultimately become a customer. And with email campaigns, although you can make sales from emails, it just doesn't have that same relationship building kind of um, connection. So for me, I was spending thousands generating these leads and unfortunately I wasn't collecting uh, mobile numbers and telephone numbers. Um, so. Many marketers make a mistake and it's a mistake because the reality of building a following on social media such as YouTube or it could be a podcast or it could be Facebook or you know Instagram, wherever it may be, you don't own those platforms. And if the 
um, creators of those platforms or the owners or the directors of those platforms make any changes, you don't have any say. And you could literally lose your audience overnight. And I see a common thing happening on Instagram where a lot of people have backup accounts because Instagram can just stop things like that. And unfortunately, you're going to be left with kind of, you know, twiddling your thumbs because you've built all this audience. You've put so much attention and so much hustle into building, you know, this tribe. And unfortunately, they're gone overnight. And um, we don't want that happening, right? We want to make sure you're actually gathering the names, emails, and telephone numbers on your own database because if that does happen, well, at least you've got a database you can direct to your new social media platforms uh, to consume more of your content or direct them to other things that you may want to offer them, such as products and services. And the last marketing mistake is measuring return on investment. Um, it's a real big thing that I think a lot of people um, don't kind of look out for. They don't maybe not understand the metrics. And because of that, they kind of hope for the best, not changing things uh, based on the data they're receiving. So things such as how many leads are you generating? What is your CPA, your cost per acquisition? You know, what is your, um, your lead magnet? How is that performing? Um, how many views or engagement are you getting on a piece of content? All these things matter that ultimately allow you to look at that data and make corrections um, based on where you want to go with your goals. So a big one is measuring data. You need to check on the return on investment of all the content that you're putting out there. And it could be that actually, you know, you're generating leads or sales on Facebook. And again, you need to know those metrics because without them, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to make those data driven decisions that are ultimately going to get you to where you want to be. So guys, I hope this episode's helped. I hope it's gave you some light bulb moments. I hope uh, you don't make these mistakes. I uh, know I've made some of these mistakes personally and uh, definitely by kind of solving these and making sure I don't do them again, it's definitely helped my businesses going forward and I hope it has an impact in your business as well. If you have liked this episode, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you on the next episode.